Um, great. So uh, next up, we have uh, Trippy. So thanks, guys, for coming. And um, this is Jen. I'm Jen, and this is Nate, uh, and we're the co-founders of Tripping. And uh, you can see here, so Tripping, oh, is it moving? There you go. There it goes. All right, can you hear me? All right, excellent. Hi. All right, I'm Jen O'Neill, and this is Nate Whitziger, and we're the co-founders of Tripping, a hospitality network where travelers can meet local people in over 130 countries. Uh, Nate and I, just for a little bit of background, we're among the first employees at StubHub, um, an online ticket marketplace that was acquired by eBay for just over 300 mil. Uh, Nate was on the tech side, I was on the business side, uh, and we've been friends ever since. Uh, and I've been living in London for the past couple years where I hosted about 150 travelers in my living room. Uh, they were aged 18 to 68, came from over 30 countries, and I kept hearing the same stories over and over again about how they wanted a safe and easy way to meet local people wherever they went. So that's kind of where you know tripping started. Um, so right now we'll give you a quick demo of the site. So let's say that you are going to New York. So you just do a search for New York, um, and you'll be able to see all of our tripping hosts uh, in the area. So what you can do is, once you're in New York, you can meet people who will uh, give you tips about where to go, kind of off the beaten path. You can meet people for coffee and uh, you know parties. We have a lot of students on the site who get together for you know for parties wherever they go. Um, and you can also uh, arrange homestays, so you can stay with local people in their homes. And we might not be connected to the yeah. internet. Let's guess, right? All right. So while Nate figures it out. Um, all right. So with our users, uh, they do come from over 130 countries right now. They're growing virally. We have um, about a 45% uh, word of mouth rate, which is amazing. Uh, of our users, thousands of them have already been meeting in person. Uh, we have. I mean, a, a huge range. So we initially thought that we'd get just students uh, and backpackers on the site, but we actually have a much larger uh, range than that. We have uh, retirees as our second largest demo. Uh, we also have a lot of families. So what people want is not only a safe and easy way to connect with local people, but also a way to connect with people they really want to meet. So imagine going to London, uh, stepping off the plane and meeting with some tech people. So you can go out for a pint you know, or whatever and sit down and talk about the tech scene in London. By the time you leave London, you not only have a much better sense of the local people and the local culture, um, but you probably expanded your professional network in a very personal way as well, uh, which kind of beats just sending a note out on LinkedIn um, or something like that. So, all right. Yeah. Going to New York. Okay, so now let's say you're going to New York. Uh, and great. All right, so now let's say you're looking for a host. And just so you know, like search is our next big project. So uh, the design is going to look very different pretty fast. It won't, it won't be blue. So it won't be blue. It won't be blue. But we're designing like heat maps and things like that. So um, it's actually it's actually going to be very cool uh, very soon. So let's say you're looking for a host. Um, let's see, female host, maybe arrival date next week. All right. So let's say you're going to be there next week, um, and then. You just click search, and we'll see who shows up, and then we can click into the profiles. So it's a social network. It's a social travel site. So everyone on the site has a profile. Uh, we encourage them to fill them out. Uh, yeah, let's go to the top one. All right, so this is a girl named Bianca, who is 24, from New York. She's hosted 11 times, it looks like. Um, so you can read all about her here. You can also see, like, when people sign up, like, they check boxes of things that they're interested in, so volunteering or partying or vegetarian or whatever whatever they might be. Um, so you, they can actually search for each other that way. Um, she has references, so let's click into them. So once people stay with her, uh, they can leave a reference so that other people on the site know what it might be like to meet, host, or stay with them. Um, you can also sort those, so if you want to see just ones from shippers. Yep. So you can see like what other trippers experienced or what other hosts may have experienced with Bianca. Um, and then, so let's say you've read her whole profile and you think this might be a cool girl to meet. Uh, you want to stay with her. So click request the trip. And here you go. And we've actually built out a booking engine in the site, um, which, is, which is great because not only do we know where all of our users are traveling, we also know about them personally, right? So like a Travelocity or Kayak has all your travel data, Facebook has all your social data, we actually have both sets of data, um, which makes it very interesting, especially when we start generating revenue. Okay, so. Yeah, so you can say that you're coming into town, you send this message to Bianca, she gets it, she looks at your profile, um, you know, you might have some things in common. So she'll write back and say, yes, I can host you on those dates. 
you then need to confirm that you're absolutely going to show up on those dates. Once you do that, it's tracked in your calendars. Uh, we're developing a mobile platform right now, so conceivably you get to New York, you get a text message saying, hey, it looks like you're staying with Bianca tonight. Here are directions to replace. Um, so yeah, and so now let's go back to her profile. Okay, now she also is a member of some networks. So this is something that we recently launched. Uh, when we first launched Tripping, we wanted to grow. We were growing virally, but we thought, okay, that's great, but it's not fast enough. So what we did is we went out and we started partnering with organizations that wanted micro communities on the site for their members. So for example, we're partnered with Dartmouth University. Uh, actually, I think Bianca is a member of Dartmouth, but she's also a <laughs> member of AmeriCorps. Um, so AmeriCorps has 600,000 alumni. And what they wanted to do was give their alums a way to connect with each other wherever they went in the world. So if you uh, were in AmeriCorps in, uh, I don't know, in Texas, and you go to New York, you can meet up with other AmeriCorps alums because you have that common connection. Uh, it's, you know, you'll probably hit it off right away. So uh, that's what networks are all about. We're partnered with over 25 organizations. Our largest partner is PADI, which is a professional association of diving instructors. And they have 18 million members, yeah. <laughs> so some of you might know it. Um, so what they wanted to do is give their members a way to connect with other divers around the world. So um, we just launched all of these, and they're just starting to promote us now. So um, yeah, pretty exciting on the networks front. And then community. OK, so then let's say you're on the site, and you want to see what other people in the community are doing. Uh, we just launched the community page. This also will be redesigned fairly soon, but uh, for now, it's pretty basic. So you can see kind of you know status updates, very similar to Facebook, what people are saying across the site. Um, do you want to go post title? Uh, yeah. So you can see local events. You can. Um, you know, see, read our blog and read, we have a do good things blog because uh, we're a social enterprise. So we try to encourage our members to give back to local communities and do good things. Um, and slide down. Okay. So we also get, I just wanted to show you this because we get postcards from all of our members, which is just, it's probably one of the coolest parts of our job because we go to the, the PO box that we have and always have postcards from all over the world from our members. So uh, that's about it. I don't know if we're out of time, but. We're out of time. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. So Couchsurfing is another site that's been around uh, since about 2004 or so. Um, great site, but uh, what we see is that a lot of people compare us to MySpace and Facebook. So MySpace was around, everyone was on MySpace because it was the only one that was out there really. Uh, and then Facebook came along and they just did it better. They had better technology. Um, in our case, we, we focus on technology and we focus on safety because um, those are the two things that we saw were really lacking in the market. I, yeah. I have a question. Oh, yeah. um, can you talk a little bit more about the safety aspect? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you want to get a trip to Okay. Um, so safety is, is obviously a very big concern. Um, and what we did is when we built Tripping, we actually built it with an 18-year-old study abroad female traveler in mind, because um, that's one of the most vulnerable demographics. Uh, so we have a couple safety mechanisms across the site. It's more than any other site of its kind. So references, you've already seen. So that's, uh, if you stay with me, you can leave a reference for me. Other people can read that. It's very public. Your, your picture is next to it. Uh, you can also leave anonymous ratings. So that way, if you happen to have an experience that maybe isn't great, you can report it anonymously. Um, so you don't have to worry about it being public information and you being embarrassed. Um, and that actually triggers something in our database. So it's a five-star rating system. Do you want to go to like your profile? Maybe? So you can show it. Anyway, so uh, it's a five-star rating system. So anonymous ratings are great because we can actually keep track of what's going on in the community at any given moment. Um, we also have video validation. So this is actually something that we just rolled out uh, a couple months ago, and it's going really well. It's a test. What we said is, OK, let's imagine that um, you have a bouncer, almost. So someone who can check your ID. We can't do background checks at, across like 130 countries. It just doesn't make sense. Um, but what we can do is arrange a Skype call. So we actually arrange a Skype call with our users. We talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. We look at their passport. We look at a recent bill or utility statement or you know, something along those lines to verify their name and their address. So we know who they are who they say they are and they live where they say they live. If the connection's choppy, if we can't really read it, we just don't validate them. Um, but what we found is not only does it make our users feel safer, uh, it's a great way for us to talk to our users. Like we get to actually have one-on-one -on -one conversations with them, not just American users, but all over the world. Um, and actually our South American users love it. So like we end up talking to them for ages. Um, so that's, it's a safety feature, but it's also great for feedback. Um, and then we also have uh, a hotline. So that's kind of the most obvious one. So we actually have um, a hotline that you can contact if you're a tripper anywhere in the world. If you lose your passport at 3 in the morning in a train station in Prague, you can contact us and we'll help you out. We'll help you figure out how to get to the nearest embassy or if you need a hotel, something like that, or a local host, you know, we'll put you in touch with. So uh, those are our main safety mechanisms. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can you talk about your business model? Sure. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so uh, right now we're focused on growth, which is lucky because our investors are, are fine with that. Um, but we do have three rev streams in development. So um, one is a travel center. So I was talking about you know, how we have really compelling data before. So not only do we know where our users are traveling, but we know about them personally. We're building out a travel center where our users can click in and, uh, and book flights and buy backpacks and do all of that. But we'll be able to take it to a really personalized level where we can say, hey, it looks like you're going to be in Rio three weeks from now and you're a jazz fan, well, there happens to be a massive jazz festival going on, do you want tickets? Um, you know, something like that. So uh, that's kind of one thing that we have. Um, another are co-brand licensing fees. So a lot of our partners are excited to have micro communities on tripping, but beyond that, they actually want kind of co-branded or white label sites that they own. Uh, so we'll be able to build those for them and then charge like a co-brand licensing fee or a monthly fee or something along those lines. And the third channel is actually the one we're, we're probably most excited about, and our users have come to us and they say, okay, I, I love the idea of meeting local people, uh, either professionally or personally or whatever, but I don't really want to stay in their house. Um, but I'd love to stay in the house of a local person without them there. Um, and so they've asked us, <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so, so what we're building is, because we we're not going to go out and compete with like Airbnb and, and sites like that. Those are great sites. Um, but what we can do is build an aggregation channel. So if you go to search um, and you search for, homes in Buenos Aires or things like that, you might see a list of all of the trippers in Buenos Aires who are willing to take you out for beers, uh, but you'd also be able to click in and see all of the listings, listings from Airbnb and VRBO and other sites that exist, and then you'll have a choice of you know where you stay. So, yeah. One last question? In the far, far back, yeah. The woman, yeah. Okay, you talked about the security of the traveler, but what about the security, the safety of the, the host? It, all our safety mechanisms apply also to the host. So the trip safe line, for example, if there are any issues they can call us. We do a lot of education around hosting. So we say, look, before you have someone come in your house, like read their profile, exchange emails with them. We have um, free SMS built into the site. So if you want to text someone you know, before, you can do that. Um, talk to them on Skype. We're integrating video into the site as well. So, uh, so yeah, we, we definitely encourage hosts to be very careful about you know, who they bring in. But it's great, we have 100% positive references so far. So. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks. And I also want to, oh. to say that we are, we are hiring for uh, designers and, and front-end uh, engineers. So if you guys uh, are interested, shoot, shoot us an email.